Hi, and welcome to today's discussion about display interfacing. Liquid crystal displays, or LCDs, are commonly used in embedded control applications. They're versatile, relatively low power, and easily readable in bright or dim light. In this lesson, we'll learn how to program and interface a popular LCD to a microcontroller. In some ways, an LCD can be thought of as a series of memory locations, with each location holding one character. Each position on the screen is one location with, with an address. So a 24 by 2 display has 48 locations, as we see here. Remember, we always start counting with 0, so those locations are addressed 0 through 47. To display a character, what you do is you position the cursor at the desired location, and you send the ASCII code for the character that you want displayed. So in the picture you're looking at, the uh, location 0 contains the ASCII code for a capital T, that's 54 hex, Location 12, it's not labeled there, but if you count over 12 positions, location 12 has the character, the ASCII code for the character 2. And be aware that the character 2 and the number 2 have two different ASCII codes. The character 2 has an ASCII code. The number 2 is just a number, not an ASCII code. So the ASCII code for the character 2 is actually 32 hex. Uh, location 23 has the ASCII code for a lowercase h, that's 68 hex and location 47 has the ASCII code for the character period and that's 2E hex. Okay, How do I know all that stuff? Google ASCII character table or ASCII code table and you'll find all of those. Many LCDs are controlled by a Hitachi chip, the HD44780. It's very popular and it's been used for many years. This chip handles a lot of the details about writing to the display itself. So all we have to do is communicate with the chip and let it do the rest. So what's the catch? Well, for one thing, the HD44780 has a Hitachi data sheet that's about 60 pages long. It's poorly written, so figuring out how to talk to the chip can be a threat to your sanity. Lucky for you, I lost my sanity a long time ago, probably when I first figured out how to use this chip. So I condensed those 60 pages into this video and its associated handout. It doesn't cover every detail about the chip, but it covers enough to get us through our labs and to get you able to display some simple things on the display. So we will use this interface in our system. So we're going to be using uh, port B and two bits from port C as you see in the picture there. And again, we're only concerned with the microcontroller to the HD chip uh, and we're not all that concerned with what happens after that. The chip controls the display itself. Inside the HD chip, there are two registers or two locations, a data register and a control register. There's an RS pin on the chip that's called register select. That tells the chip which register we're talking to. So when the RS pin is a 1, we're talking to the data register. When the RS pin is a 0, we're talking to the control register. So remember, if you looked at the picture before, we have a port bit connected to RS, so we'll pull that port bit high or low depending on whether we want to talk to the data register or the control register. There's another pin called E, that stands for enable, and that pin is used to lock in the data or the command that we send to the chip. So pulsing the enable pin high and then low causes the chip to read the bits on D0 through D7 and copy those bits into the appropriate register. So when you're talking to this chip, what you do is you pull the RS pin high or low, depending on which register you want to talk to. You send a character or a command to the eight data wires, D0 through D7, and then you pulse the E pin high and then low. The control register allows you to send commands to the display. So there's a command to clear the entire display, make it all blanks. Uh, there's a command to move the cursor. There's a whole bunch of other commands. So when your software has to send a command to the, dis to, uh, to the display controller, what it does is it's going to send a zero out here so that we know we're talking to the control register. So it sends a zero. In our case, we're going to connect it to port B bit, or port C bit zero, so RC zero. We'll send a zero here so it knows we're talking to the control register. We'll send a control word on these eight data wires out through port B, and then we'll send a one to zero pulse. We'll, we'll turn this pin high and then low to pulse that, and that's what locks the data in. That's what locks the control word in. Okay, and after every time you talk to this chip, you have to delay about 100 milliseconds before you try to talk to it again. It's kind of a slow chip. Here are some typical commands that you can use with this display. Not a complete list. Uh, again, you know, get the 60-page data sheet for this chip if you want a complete list. But here are the very common commands that you'll use in a, on a kind of an everyday basis. 
um, 0x30, the 0x remember means it's a hexadecimal number, so 30 hex is the initialization uh, command, and I don't know why, but for some reason you have to send this command first and you have to repeat it three times. Okay, Once or twice doesn't seem to work, but three times always does. So we send this command three times. Uh, in fact, the first six commands down here are a great way to initialize the chip, so send them in this order, the first six commands. Okay, and after each command, remember to put a little 100 millisecond delay. So writing to the control register, as I said before, we're going to send a zero out RC0, so it knows we're talking to the control register. That's the register select pin on the, uh, on the controller chip. Send the control word to port B. We're going to send a one to RC1. Okay, that's the enable pin, that's the high, and the 1 and the 0 make a high to low transition. That's the pulse that locks in the control word. And then we wait about 100 milliseconds before doing anything else. Writing to the data register is very similar. The only difference is that we're going to put a 1 in the RS pin over here on port C bit 0. We're going to put a 1 on the RS pin to say, hey, we're talking to the data register now. We're going to send an ASCII character out the uh, out port B, out the eight data wires to D0 through D7. So that's the ASCII character that we want displayed. And then again, we pulse the uh, RC, the uh, E pin, the enable pin, to lock that data in. So it's the same same as talking to the control register. The only difference is what's here. So let's say I wanted to display the letter A at the current location, the character capital A at the current location, current location being wherever the cursor happens to be positioned. So I'm going to send a 1 to RC0 so it knows we're talking to the data register. I'm going to send the ASCII code for the letter A to port B. I'm going to send a 1 and then a 0 to RC1. That pulses the E pin, high then low, locks in the data. And then I'm going to delay about 100 milliseconds before I do anything else. Okay, and the cool thing is, hey, you don't have to memorize the ASCII table and you don't even have to look up a lot of codes. If it's a letter or a digit or any other printable character, anything that you can type from the keyboard, then all you have to do is put the character in single quotes like I've shown here. So I can say port B is assigned the character A. The compiler will look up the ASCII code for a capital A. It happens to be 41 hex. Okay, how do I know that? I'm a geek. Okay, but we'll let the compiler look that up. Because uh, I, could, I could have my facts wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 41 hex. You can look it up and verify that. Um, but anyways, you just put the character in single quotes. The compiler will look that up. It'll send the right ASCII code out these eight data wires. And of course, in programming, you want to make sure that you define custom names. You don't want to have to memorize, let's see, the RS pin. Where is that connected to? Is it RC0 or RC1 or what bit? Okay, so define the name RS and define it as the port uh, um, that you're connecting it to. Uh, same thing with the E pin. Define a name called capital E and uh, equate it to the port bit that you're connecting it to and the port that's connected to the D0 through D7 pins. So I might say uh, um, pound sign define um, you know, LCD as port B. So there it is. Enough information to help you with this week's homework in labs and enough information to get you started with using this display. Now, show me what you know. See you next time.